Traditional ballistic missiles follow a parabolic trajectory, a predictable arc that goes up and down like a ball. It means they can be detected early in flight. Hypersonic glide vehicles work differently. They exploit physics using drag and friction so they can fly in all directions like an aircraft, but at super fast speeds, making them very difficult to detect until it's too late. These capabilities are now exiting the labs, if you like, and are beginning to be introduced into service. Uh, both Russia and China have uh, hypersonic boost glide systems entering the inventory, probably in comparatively small numbers so far and at different range categories, uh, but the, uh, the, there is an obvious challenge emerging. Traditional ground-based radars have either looked at the environment where you find a combat aircraft, so basically not a great deal above 70,000 feet down to amongst the weeds, or conversely for um, ballistic missile early warning, where you're looking for an ICBM, you're looking uh, for something pretty high up, exo-atmospheric post-launch. Post Hypersonic cruise and, and boost glide systems, uh, they're in the order of 100 to 150,000 feet. So they sit in a part of the atmosphere that traditionally has been kind of neglected in terms of what you were looking at vis-a-vis uh, -vis a threat. That's obviously no longer the case, so you need to be able to cover that. Um, the kinds of systems that the US is now beginning to, to, to look to deploy in orbit are uh, based around infrared sensors on satellites. And th there's a further challenge in that, in that the IR signature of a, of a hypersonic glide vehicle, a hypersonic cruise missile, it, it's, it's comparatively quite low. Um, so you're having to go and look for that in an area of the atmosphere or, or at altitudes that traditionally you haven't been particularly interested in. So this is pushing the US towards uh, developing uh, new satellite infrastructure and looking at uh, improved sensor technologies. And this is all part of a kind of architecture which is intended to help you deal with this threat. Um, as with any kind of defensive architecture, it's never going to be foolproof, it's never going to be impermeable, um, but against a small number of uh, threats, um, your chances of dealing with it will eventually be pretty high, and against a higher number of threats, then you may be able to cut the numbers down significantly. So it's part of, a, 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 of an overall or a much wider programme, which will include eventually uh, interceptors, ground-based systems, more ground-based systems, possibly more space-based systems that allows you to begin to deal with this kind of threat. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.